So at this point, I've got my website ready to go again, Victor's Bakery. I'm looking at the home page, and I've got home about blog products page, which doesn't, which doesn't sound at all appetizing. I don't want to eat products. I want to eat baked goods, or I want to visit the shop, you know, something more friendly. So that would just require, which we'll do later, I, I guess, that will just require that we edit our menu so that the, the titles of those links don't sound so... Uh, generic. We can do that later. But I want to get back to our settings of our shop and then start to add products. So if you recall, help me to recall, where do we go to see the settings of our shop from where I currently am? Anyone have an idea here? I think I heard someone say you go back to dashboard. Under settings, settings menu here under the dashboard, store. Let's go to settings and store. <coughs> and the last tab that we were going to look at was here at the end, presentation. So we can look at presentation and uh, I think I don't I don't think I really mentioned very much here. Maybe like two things. But we're gonna look at presentation again a little bit more in detail. Um, Here we've got a section, button settings, button type, add to cart, buy now. So at the moment, the way this will work is that when, once we've got products, we'll have the ability to add to cart. You might have seen on other retailers, online re retailers, you also have the option buy now, so that you can quickly um, buy your product if you've got an account and all of that. But notice the buy now is not available and it only works with PayPal Standard, so you need to have PayPal Standard, and I think we're using PayPal Express. So if you wanted that, you have some extra setup that you need, but Add to Cart is fine. Hide Add to Cart button. Notice No is the default, which is what you want. You don't want the ability for people to buy your product to be hidden. Now, the reason that you might have this to turn on yes is because you have other functionality through JavaScript or PHP or other methods uh, to, to be able to buy a product. But for most of us, we're going to have the plain old Add to Cart button built into the system. Show product ratings. This might be useful um, because this is becoming much more of a standard on many websites for a variety of reasons. User ratings. How do you know if that restaurant is good? How do you know if that lawyer is good? How do you know if this is good or bad? Well, it's user ratings. It's people giving an opinion. And of course, there could be the possibility that they could be abused and that spam bots, thank you, spam bots could be taking over and, and or you could buy a spam bot to give you 100 five-star reviews. Of course, there's that possibility for all of that abuse. But, um, hopefully through various factors like moderation and just paying attention to your site uh, you should be able to deal with those uh, fake reviews and such. This is off by default but this is up to you to decide. Do you want people to rate your products or not? I'm gonna say yes for the moment and you can always turn it off just because maybe I wanna see what does it look like. Another one that's off by default and you need to decide what it's like but I'll turn it on to yes is show stock availability. Now, if you've got a limited amount of items, let's say I sell t-shirts and I have 10 of them to sell, obviously I would want to show that there are nine left. But if I can continually produce t-shirts as necessary, I don't need to show an availability because I'll always create one. So in, in a sense, for my Victor's Bakery, I'm always going to be able to bake more, bake more cupcakes, so I don't really need to show availability. But just to see what it looks like uh, from the front end, I'm going to turn it on. And I think I've mentioned it before, but oftentimes when my company deals with a new plugin or a new theme, we just try to test out all of the features because no manual is going to give you all of the instructions as directly as it could. And so what I would do is I would activate these various options and check them. I would see what do they look like um, in my design display fancy purchase notification. This one we turned on previously. It was off. 
and we will see what it looks like but when I mentioned the, one of my clients you saw that you click on it you get a little pop-up that says continue shopping or check out now if you want that little pop-up you would have to turn that one on display fancy purchase notification and it's not on by default depending how you're doing your shipping do you want to display per item shipping yes or no yes by default usually that's what you want people want to know how much are you Am I being charged also for shipping? Disable link and title won't make sense at the moment, but once we've got products, we're going to have a screen on our products page that has the name of the product and the thumbnail, and then the next product and the next thumbnail. And so the title of the product will be an active link. You'll be able to click on the product to see a screen that focuses on the product where you'll see probably a larger picture, the description, star rating, other features. So this one is saying no, don't disable it, meaning yes, leave the title clickable to show me a larger version of the product. So if you wanted to turn that off for whatever reason, like it, it wouldn't work with your theme, that's where you would turn it off. But I'm going to leave it as no, leave the link clickable. By default, users will be able to buy more than one product. I want to buy five cookies. So there's a quantity uh, to select. If you don't want people to add an extra quantity, you can turn no on that. But they could still, if you think about it, they could still add more, more quantities. If you have only one particular product, um, and, or you have a limited amount of products, but you don't want people to buy more than one, they can still buy the product and then go back to the shop to the store and add it again in a sense getting two even though they didn't have a box to say give me two products so it's not as foolproof as it could be but the default is yes and usually you want people to buy more than one of your product the default display of your products will look kind of boring. And you have these other ones, list and grid, but you can't use them until you purchase the gold cart, which I believe is $99. So for $99, you get a different design of your shopping cart, a couple of different designs, and a bunch of extra features. So we can't do anything with product display. We leave that alone. And therefore, we can't do much here either, grid view settings. We don't even have the grid ability, so we can't change those grid options. I usually don't see the list of categories being very useful. It's not that pretty looking unless you further define it with CSS or, or code, that is. This is going to show a list of categories, but we're going to do this better when we deal with um, WordPress pages to display categories. So I'm going to leave it no. Don't show a list of categories. We can't do very much with show product categories here. Uh, it just says show all products or show product categories. Later when we create products, later when I create pies and cakes and cookies and uh, bagels and whatever, those are product categories. Later when I create those, I might be able to edit this. So at the moment we'll just say our products page will show all products, which might not be the best, but we'll be able to control it better later. Sort products by time uploaded, ascending. So that'll be the oldest product will be at the bottom, the newest product at the top. We have a few options. Alphabetical, so show them ascending which means um, it's actually backwards there I believe it's backwards ascending it's gonna go from A to Z meaning that Z will be the first one it's ascending to that it's going up to that descending then it starts from A and descends down to Z now I may have that backwards but obviously we can easily change it organized by price so we can have the most expensive product ascending so the cheapest product 99 cents to the most expensive one nine dollars or descending the most expensive product first down to the cheapest and then drag and drop well I can organize them how I want I want a particular product first second etc for the moment I will leave this on name 
ascending, that's A to Z, I believe. Uh, so our products will be alphabetical. Breadcrumbs <clears throat> will make more sense once we once we have it set up, but for the moment we'll turn it on. And breadcrumbs, you often see this on big stores like Amazon and Target and such, where let's say you did your searching and you found eventually, um, let's say a brand uh, a, a cute new uh, trash can for your office. So trash can inside of the office category, inside of the home decor category, right? So deep into those levels we have trash cans. That's a breadcrumb. Let's say it in terms of uh, the bakery. I'm going to be selling, um, let's say, a dozen cookies. Cookies inside the category of gluten-free, inside the category of vegan. So that's breadcrumbs. You're going to see on screen the, the organization of, of those products. Let's leave product groups, display all products at the moment, and later we can change this to be a different sort of design. Subcategories, unless you have subcategories, this won't do much use. And I'm going to leave it to no, because we probably won't really deal with subcategories. But if you will, you can turn that on and replace title with product category. I don't recommend this one at all. This is going to clutter your screen up too much because let's say I have key lime pie. That's my product. That's what's going to display on the title. But key lime pie is in the category of pies. So my title would say pies slash key lime pie. And I think that's going to show way too much stuff on screen. It's going to clutter your design. So I would say no, don't don't also show the category and product in the title, just the product. Featured products. I'm going to turn this one on to yes. And what featured products are is, let's say that this month I really want to sell pumpkin flavored cookies. So I've got pumpkin cookies and all my other cookies, chocolate chip cookies, snickerdoodles, thin mints, etc etc but I really want to focus on the pumpkin cookies so if I set that particular product as a featured product it will always display first so people go to the shop and they'll always see that featured product and then the rest if you don't have any featured products nothing extra displays but let's say we do have featured products so we want to show them first There's different ways to display the cart. We already have a page to display our shopping cart, but we can also explicitly set it. We can work with a widget, which is pretty useful. We'll get to that. Drop shop, we need that extra drop shop extension, which is part of the gold cart. Honestly, I don't know the full features of drop shop. I've never had to use it. I've never had to bother to look it up either because the particular clients I've worked with, and they never needed it. So I don't know exactly what Drop Shop does. And then we've got Manual, which we can display our cart via code wherever we need to display it. And it's that line of PHP code. So for most of us, we'll want to keep this on widget. Display postage and tax. This will display the words plus postage and tax. Usually you see on US-based companies it says more like plus shipping and handling. So here it's going to say plus postage and tax. It's going to say bagels, $5 a dozen, post plus postage and tax. If you want to display that on screen, you can. Uh, we usually don't need to, except especially with this wording, so I'm going to say no. So if we create categories, which we will, we can add a description. But the description might not display by default. Here's one 
part where I can say show the product category description. This is up to you. I'm going to leave it off for the moment. If I also add a thumbnail graphic to my categories and I want to display the thumbnail, I can turn that on. If I want to display on screen, I've got 17 items in the cookies category. I can turn that on. So by default, it won't show the number of products per category. It'll just show the name of the category. If you want also the number, you can turn it on. We can show the categories like a grid. We're not even showing categories, so I'm skipping it. Yes? You, uh, you, you can't, unfortunately, because some of the way the cart works is built into the plugin, and so the Visual Composer might not be able to edit the specific code. Uh, that's a good point, though. So you might try it, but you're going to see that if you open up the products page, you will not literally see the products there for you to manipulate. It'll just have a short little bit of code that says products, because then internally the plugin takes that command and shows the products. But if you have a little bit of experience in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP, perhaps, you can edit parts of the code uh, to make them display how you want, but probably the Visual Composer won't be able to, to edit that code. We have thumbnails, and so we have a few different thumbnails. Product thumbnail size, product category thumbnail size, single product image size. So this is also dictated, I've found, it's dictated through the plugin. So all of these have the same size, 148 pixels by 148 pixels, relatively medium to small size, and square. So if my products are actually portrait-sized or landscape-sized, there's a problem here. All of my thumbnail sizes are square. So here then it says crop thumbnails? No. Or yes, choosing yes means the thumbnails are cropped to exact dimensions. Normally they're proportional. This means if I've got a 200 tall picture by 148 wide, it's going to shrink it to fit into these dimensions, 148 by 148, because crop thumbnails is set to no. If you set this to yes, it's going to cut out the parts that fall outside of the 148 by 148. One way around this, of course, is you need to decide what are the sizes of my pictures. They're going to be, let's say, 250 by 350. So they're going to be tall pictures. So then that means I know I can put in here my thumbnails, you know, are going to be 200 by 300, or whatever I said, 250 by 350. So if I, if I know the, those dimensions, I can put them in here. If I don't know that, you might not get the result of pictures that you that you were looking for. You might get pictures that are cropped or squished. So that's something that you need to decide. I, re I would recommend, of course, for all your products, keep them consistent. Your product pictures, that is. Uh, try to photograph them, especially if they're your own products. Try to photograph them the same way, the same kind of camera, the same kind of setup. Use a tripod. Set your tripod. Put tape on the floor to always put the tripod the same way all the time. Because the professional photos from all of the professional companies do that. They have the product, the full-time product photographer position. And they are photographing perfectly all the products. So here you have the control to change the look of your graphics. But I'm not going to change any of them yet because I don't know how I'm going to display them uh, really yet. Do I even want to show thumbnails? Most likely yes. I want people to see what they're buying. And before we wrapped up last time, I mentioned the light box effect. This will give us a cool zoom effect. Um, so we want yes on that, and then coupled with color box. 
color boxes is one of the ways to zoom in. I think thick box is too plain. I think color box works better and is more visually interesting for people. Use pagination. I'm gonna say yes. And here you can decide how many products per page will you show. That's pagination. On page one, I'm going to display three products. And then it'll say next page, three more products. Next page, three more products. Whatever you'd like. Because the default now, if you've got 40 products, all 40 will display in one long screen. Which might not be good because then as you add more products, the screen will get longer, more cumbersome, and it'll be slower to download. So just to see how it works, I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say three products per page. That's probably too, too small of a number. It's going to depend on your products. I'd probably do five or ten per page. But I just want to show you what it looks like once you've got uh, pagination. And then, coupled with that pa pagination uh, position, put both. This will show at the top of the screen, next page, previous page, page two, page three, page four, and at the bottom. Notice it was only at the bottom, so a person would have to scroll all the way down to the screen to go to next page. I would say put it at the top and the bottom. And finally, comments. WordPress has a built-in system of commenting. It's not the most powerful. It has a lot of great features, but it's not the most powerful. So we have intense debate, which is an extra feature to add, which honestly, I've never used it so I don't know how well it works. It might be amazing. I've never touched it. So if you do want to use Intense Debate, you have to turn it on and set up your account and all of that, but I'm going to leave it on No because I, I don't have this set up, and honestly, I myself don't know how it works. I've never had to use it. If you make any changes, remember to click Save. Excuse me, what did you yes. reduce for the use uh, category for view? Uh, Use category grid view. Uh, where's that? Oh, this one right here. Use category grid view. I left it on none uh, because I'm not really going to be showing my categories anyway in, in like a list. Uh, if I did dis decide to show my categories, then I could put it in a grid view and it'll be you know nicely organized. Any other questions on this screen? So a lot of settings. And some of them will apply, some of them won't. Some of them might not, might not make sense, but I always recommend, especially when we've got a test site like WAMP here with a backup on duplicator, make changes, see what happens. Don't like the change, set it back. Made a big mistake, revert back to your site. And all of these settings, basically, usually, you usually set them once, and then you're done. But some things take a little bit of effort to set up, especially the taxes and the shipping. But um, here on presentation, one last thing, and then we'll, we'll move on. On presentation, on the right side, there's this white box that says, No theme files have been moved to your WordPress theme folder. WP e-commerce provides you the ability to move your theme files to a safe place for theming control. If you want to change the look of your site, select the files you want to edit from the list and click the Move button. This will copy the template files to your active WordPress theme. This is pretty advanced, and when we get to this, we'll talk about that we always have the ability to edit our site's code. So if any of you have experience in HTML or CSS, uh, you can actually edit parts of your site and your theme and your plugin that might, nor that might not normally be editable. And so this is saying the WP Commerce files that you can edit are not available just yet. So if you wanted to edit, for example, what does it look like when someone uses the grid view, or when someone has the shopping cart widget, or what does the featured product look like? So all of those pieces right there are editable, but once you select, once you select them and make them part of your theme. So I'm going to recommend, yes, select them all. You might not edit them all, but at least they'll be handy here. Select them all, and then 
activate move template files. This is going to copy or move actually all of the pieces of the of this of this themes files to uh, an editable section of your WordPress. And we'll get to it later, but it's going to be under Appearance Editor. We've always got that Appearance Editor that lets us edit the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP of the site. And a WordPress site is actually made up of a lot of code, a lot of languages of code. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP can be pretty complex. You've got a, a simple backup solution right here. This will back up your theme, and notice it's going to put it inside of your, inside your, inside your WAMP folder, inside the WW folder. You're going to see WP content slash uploads slash WPSC slash theme backup. So this will make a basic backup of your theme, but not really much else. It's not going to back up your users or your products. Uh, the database and that important stuff, so it's not that useful, I think. Re uh, duplicator is still much more useful. And usually we'll be making edits to the site from within the dashboard. Sometimes we might make edits other ways, like on the server, the file manager, using FTP and such, so things might not be synchronized because the dashboard might not necessarily be looking at what you've done on the FTP software. So if you flush the cache, that should synchronize things. Um, so mm -hmm. What do we do with the, the backup? And, uh, We're not going to do anything. The, the, the duplicator backup plugin that we have is better, so we're not going to really use that basic backup. Just to be sure, I'm going to save at the bottom one more time. I don't think you need to save again, but just to be safe, I'm going to save it again. And now it confirms that all of the files have been moved so that they could be editable. Okay, any questions here before we do a product? Yes? So if we uh, kind of, what I'm reading here is uh, the this is saved in the Queen's 2015 folder. If we switch to the Queen or whatever other folder, can we use it for new units? Yes, that's a good point. Very good point. Um, when s we'll see that once we've got a particular theme that's active, um, and then we switch between themes, things might not transfer right away, like our menus especially. And then it looks like here also. This is these files were saved to the currently active theme. So if we switch to the other theme, Canyon, we'd have to copy the files over again, which would mean they would be copied over plain. Those edits that we made to those files wouldn't transfer over because they were attached to the other theme. This is kind of advanced stuff uh, when we make edits to our code. Um, and there's no easy solution around this, but it is something to be aware of, that once you switch from theme to theme, your content uh, transfers over really easily, but sometimes the, the uh, customization doesn't. We just have to be aware of it so that we can deal with it. Okay, so let's say taking a grand view of things. I've got Victor's Bakery. Now I've I've got a site and I'm going to start selling products. So I want to um, sell a variety of baked goods. And the first thing that I want to do, and the first thing that I would recommend for you, is to figure out what sorts of categories of products you have. Um, these products will help you and the user. It will help you because you'll have your products organized so that you can get positive SEO, search engine optimization. When the search engines see that your site is organized, that you take advantage of categorization and such, it will help you get found by the search engines. And it helps your customers to use categories because then they'll be able to search on your site for a category or they'll be able to browse categories and all that good stuff. So what we'll do is 
we'll start to look at now <clears throat> on the menu on the left. If you hover over products, hover over products, and then let's select categories. So we have a generic product category. When we talked about blogs briefly last month, we talked in there about that we should also have categories for for product uh, for blog posts. So we we here will use categories for products. Name as it how it, how it appears on your site. So the one of the categories I will have is cookies. And notice I'm spelling it with a capital letter because it will be visible to your users. This is a category that users can search for or they can browse and the search engines can find. So in a sense it's also keywords. But really, keywords, as you think about them with SEO, are a little more related to product tags. Anyway, I'm going to call this category cookies. You don't have to put anything into the slug because it will automatically take what you wrote under name and apply it here. And the slug is just the lowercase version, the no space version of, of the name of the category. We have parent, which doesn't work at the moment because we don't have any parent category that makes sense. But let's say I have cookies, and I have the subcategory of, of uh, sugar-free cookies, and the subcategory of cookies that actually taste good. So I can have those two uh, kinds of categories, and they're part of the cookie category. Cookie, sugar-free, and good cookies. But I don't have that just yet, so I won't fill anything yet. Description. Remember when we were in the settings, there was a button, show the description of your categories? I said no, so this is not even going to show up. But if I had said yes in my options and written something here, depending on your theme, that might show up on screen. And that might be helpful for, S for SEO, because the search engines can find your site and organize it and show it to people a lot easier if your site is as detailed as possible because the search engines care about your content. The only thing I'm going to do at the moment, however, is add a category name of cookies. And because we have a bunch of other options that we don't really need just yet, but look at what we've got. Do I want to put an image? That makes sense. Uh, if I could do the grid view, I would, but I don't have the gold cart. What size here? I won't put anything in. It'll automatically put a size for me. I only want to show this particular category at a certain location. On a different screen, we can set additional checkout form fields and what kind of shipping. So this can be pretty complex, but the only thing we'll do for the moment is add a name and then at the bottom click Add New Product Category. Uh, you didn't put in the lowercase uh, version of the cookies? No, because actually it does it for me. You see, after, after I added cookies, it automatically put the lowercase uh -huh. slug for me. So let's say I'm selling cookies and I'm selling pies. So I'm just going to add a, a few categories here. Cookies, pies, cakes. Take a moment to do that. Create cookies, pies, cakes.
We can add as many as we want, of course, and think about a place like Amazon. They've got lots and lots and lots of categories and subcategories. Uh, so depending on your product, you may need that or not. But let's say this is all that I need for this particular shop. Usually I don't add product tags. I don't think of product tags just yet. Those oftentimes appear as I start to put products, similar to blog posts. So I want categories, but I'll, do, I'll deal with tags a little later. So let's say I wanted to um, add my first uh, cake um, under products here. Let's select add new. We're adding a new product. And let's say this is a cake. Uh, this is going to be birthday cake. So the title is birthday cake. I have a spot to write whatever I want, a spot, a spot to add pictures and videos and whatever I want. So the screen looks exactly like a blog post, but it's got many other uh, screen options to work with. So let's just say for the moment, birthday cake. Um, let me say, I don't know, 10-inch uh, chocolate birthday cake square shape. I can obviously add bullet points and um, pictures and slideshows and all that advanced stuff. Let's say this is all we really need. And if you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of other fields to fill out. For example, product tags. Under product tags, here I thought of adding one, particularly here. Birthdays. So birthday-related baked goods. I'm going to have birthday cake, obviously. But I could have, maybe I'm, I'm going to sell like a... Uh, what are those? What are those called that are on a little stick, like a little fried thing of dough or whatever, and it's on a stick? Like what's that? Cake balls or cake cake, cake pops? Yeah, cake pops. Cake pops. So I could have cake pops, perfect for birthdays. So the concept here is I'm attaching the birthdays category to more than one product category because cake pops would be their own category. Let's say I have birthday cookies. Okay, well, I've got a category of cookies for cookies, but then I've got them tied together, the birthday cake and the birthday cookies with the product tag of birthdays. This is just, again, to organize my products, to make it easier for people to find my products, and also to help my SEO. So I'm going to add that. And I capitalized it because this will be visible to people. Another idea that I thought of, of a tag could be simply chocolate. Because I could use chocolate as a tag for chocolate pies, chocolate cakes, chocolate cookies, chocolate cake pops, etc. So you see the big difference. Categories are the large organizational units. Cakes. Birthday cakes, wedding cakes, uh, anniversary cakes, you know, different cakes, pies, uh, key lime pie, lemon meringue pie, apple pie, lots of different types of pies. But I can tie them together in different ways, sugar-free. So sugar-free wedding cake, sugar-free key lime pie, etc. Yes? Would a product category selection still be view viewable? I mean, do you want that? Viewable by uh, the person? Yeah, by the person. Yes. Both, I, I was, I hadn't gotten to it, but good point. Uh, I want to also activate here because this yeah. is a particular, this is a particular cake. I was just going down the line, but I would want to also activate cake because I want people to find it and to view it either way. 
either for tags or either for categories. So yes, um, let's go ahead and also add the cake, cakes category because birthday cake fits in that category and it's got these couple of tags. Notice I can create a, a brand new category on the spot if I'd like. I'm going to go down the right column and then on the left. So next we've got featured image. Depending on the theme, this featured image might might be the thumbnail or it might display on screen in different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find a picture from the internet, borrow it, and add it to this product. I believe I mentioned last month, and if I didn't, when you borrow a picture online, you have from online, you have to be careful where you're getting it from because you don't know if the particular creator of the picture will appreciate that you borrowed their picture. Just because I find a picture online doesn't mean I really can use it unless I confirm that because of various copyright or trademark issues. So instead of simply doing a search on Bing or Yahoo or Google or whatever, instead of going to a, a, a generic search engine where it'll show me two million results, and probably uh, most of them are not okay for you to use. I'm going to recommend this, and you remind me if I showed this in this class or not, because sometimes I forget. Did I talk about the website pixabay.com? P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com? Pixabay.com? Not this month, I know, but maybe last month? Anyone remember? Mm -hmm. If I didn't, good. Pixabay.com is a website for free, high-quality images you can use anywhere. So again, I could go search on Google for chocolate cakes, and I'll find millions of results, literally. But I'm not comfortable using an image that I don't know its copyright status, because you don't know if the original creator or uploader of the picture made it okay for you to use on your site. You don't know if some will consider it stealing, or some will consider it flattery, or some will consider it great. However, if you go to a place like this, pixabay.com, where they focus on free images that are, that are devoid of those issues, you'll be much better off. You're not going to get the millions of results, unfortunately, um, that you would get from Google and such, but hopefully you get a result that you that you can use, and especially for free. And if I was doing this for real clients, usually I would not do this anyway. For real clients, we would photograph their real products, or we would design their real pictures. I wouldn't look for I wouldn't look for pictures online. I would actually um, create them as part of our uh, concept. Uh, of our plan. So when you search here, I got a result of 389, which is obviously very small compared to to to, to Yahoo. Uh, I get there 2 million probably. But that's okay. I got some results. And what I would say is skip the first row of results because these are the sponsored images. These are most likely not actually free. I would go to the next row and beyond. So Let's see if any of these. Well, that looks chocolate-like, but I don't want a drawing. I mean, that looks birthday-like, but I don't want a drawing. Oh, we'll see. This is a really fancy birthday chocolate cake. Oh, I'm going to borrow that picture. I just want a picture. So you can click on any picture. Then here we've got small, medium, large, extra large. The one you decide depends on how you want to present it on screen. For example, large here, that's pretty big. I had said last um, last time, if you go with one that's 1,000 pixels maximum dimension, width or height, usually that's big enough so that it looks nice and clear and also downloads relatively fast. This one's getting a little bit larger. That's, uh, that's, that's higher than HDTV quality, actually. So uh, that might be too high quality. Uh, the small one might work. It's only 640 by 480. But maybe the medium one. It's still a little bit larger than what I had said. I would recommend, but 
that's okay with um, with what I want to accomplish. So once you find a size that you like, click free download. You may get a pop-up that says verify. You can read the the number. Save the picture to my desktop. I've got a picture, and now in WordPress I can click Set Featured Image and upload the picture. And now uh, I will add, and that will add a thumbnail to that particular product. So I have quote unquote uploaded the picture even though I'm running on the virtual server of WAMP set featured image and now that picture is going to appear. Now it's a wide picture and my thumbnail settings were previously set to square shape so I won't know exactly what it looks like until I actually publish it and see it on the site. Okay, the next is one of the most important things that we want to set for our product, obviously, how much does it cost? Product, product pricing. We've got price and sale price. So let's say, uh, I don't know these prices, let's just say $12 for this, for this cake. So $12 will display on screen. It might be on sale. $9. So what will happen is on screen it will show the 12 crossed out and then the actual 9 to show that it's on sale. This then gets into the whole psychology of sales, of online sales and such. Uh, one, of the, one of the tricks to get people to buy is to show that something has been discounted. It's a deal. So I want to make sure to buy it. Another bit of psychology is if you have your prices set to cents. So let's say I'm trying to sell this for $12. But if I set it to $11.95, for example, it's just five cents different. That's going to convince people a little bit more. Well, it's not as expensive as I thought. Let's say the product was a $20 cake. If we had it at $19.95 or $99 or whatever, the psychology of it is I'm not seeing the two. I'm not seeing the 20 so that's going to convince people. It's not as expensive. I only see a one. Let's say I'm selling a product for $10. $9.75, let's say. Close enough. And it'll convince them to buy because it's not, it's quote unquote, not as expensive. But I'm not going to do anything that fancy at the moment. I'm just going to write, this is $12. I can set different prices for different currencies. I can say $11 in Mexico. But I can change different, I can charge different prices. I won't be that fancy uh, because after all, I'm only selling in the US. Add a quantity discount. This is where the math comes in, and I've never, never been good at it. So um, at a certain quantity, you get a discount. So let's say you buy three, and then they will be, uh, you'll get them at $10 each. Right? That's pretty straightforward. You can uh, choose different options, of course. 
like okay let's say if you buy five at a time well I don't know six at a time then you'll get them for eight dollars something like that let's say So guys over there, you're kind of distracting. If their computer doesn't work, just switch to another computer, please. So we have different sorts of quantities here that we can do discounts for. And however complex you want to be, I'm not going to get too complex here. I'm just going to leave the defaults $12. But we have quantity discounts. And then the last option is it a donation. And you can turn that on. There's not much to it. It's a donation or not. Um, I don't have much insight to give you on that, unfortunately. I haven't had to do that, donations. But if you do have some sort of, um, some sort of um, donation system set up, you can do that. You see, there's lots of little options that we still need to get to. But let's, um, let's look at one more, then we'll take a break. This one's always confusing. Skew, uh, the stock, the stock keeping unit. It's just a unique designation of a particular product, and this can have any sort of setup. Let's say that I'm selling cakes, and so they have the prefix of CK. All my cakes will have an, a skew starting with CK and then dash 001. So internally in my system I know that all birthday cakes have uh, this skew, CK001. It can be as complex as I want. CK B and this is 10 in, uh, 12 inch size so 12. CK B12. That means it's a cake it's a birthday cake, 12 inches. So let's say I make other products later that are also birthday cakes, but maybe I sell the 10-inch version, CKB10. So this number here can be anything. This stock keeping unit can be anything, numbers and letters, any way to keep track of them. And when you've got a not very complex inventory, you might not need it. But as you get complex with different inventories, with a lot of products, that is, then uh, the SKU is, is pretty useful. I, I believe the SKU shows up on screen because of the theme. So we can add it and then we'll see what it looks like on screen. Product has limited stock. If you turn that on, you get a bunch of extra options. So let's say I've only got 10 of these to sell. And when you get to zero, send me an email that it ran out. And when it gets to zero, remove them from the, from the shop because they're no longer available. But a tactic to sell is if you don't unpublish it, you will, see, you will show people, this is what you used to have. Look at what you missed. And through various other ways of marketing then, we can maybe convince people, visit us again, come back, we're going to have in stock soon. So you could edit your product, and once it's run out, you can edit the product and add to the description, for example, out of stock at the moment, come back in a week. And so then the product will still be visible in the shop, it won't be able to be bought, but then that could entice people to 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 come back to buy again. In this case, it doesn't make sense uh, for me to have a limited stock because I can always uh, bake these these cakes. So I won't use the limited stock. But do you do you see if you have a certain amount of collectibles that you're selling? You're going to run out of them eventually, so it's a good idea to have this set up with limited stock. So I'm not going to use it. Uh, lastly, then we'll take a break. Uh, taxes, if you don't 
Okay, in your settings, you have taxes, and we can turn that on or off globally. Let's say we turn on taxes globally in the settings. We can have individual products exempt from taxation. We can have this particular product not taxed, but all 98 of our other products are taxed. So you see that's what that means. And then if you wanted to set specific taxes for specific products, we set up a tax system in the settings that apply to everything, but we can also do individual taxation for individual products. Taxable amount in your currency, not a percentage, which is perhaps not as uh, not as uh, robust as you might think. You have to have a, an actual value here of the tax. I'm not going to use it because my main settings of taxation is set up how I how I think I want. We're going to look at these other options in the middle column in a moment, but for the moment, let's click Save Draft at the top right. The product's not ready to be published yet. Just save it. It's time for a break now. So save your product. It's about 143 when we come back at 153. Then we'll look at what are these other options here, and then publish, and then, and then keep, keep working. So let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 1 for, uh, 153.